compare some numbers today. Um, which one's larger, 1 1.3 or 1.03? 1 1 How'd you know? How'd you know? Did you compare each individual digit's place and see which one's larger? The one's place is the same. The tens place is different. This one is a larger tens place, so 1.3 is the larger number. Five eighths and six ninths, which one's bigger? How'd you know? What'd you ask? Turn it in decimals exactly what I would have done too. 0.625 versus 0 0.6 repeating. Uh, let's see. So sixth place is the same. Uh, tenth place, excuse me. The hundredth place, well, six repeating is the same as 0.66. Six is bigger than two. So six ninths is bigger than five eighths. Same game, order from least to greatest. Your order should have been 0 0.04. Three sevenths, zero point four five, and one half yeah. would have been your order. Okay. We're going to look at comparing and classifying numbers today. In particular, we're going to look at um, how do we tell which ones are the bigger and smaller numbers. Believe it or not, this is something that um, people made a lot of mistakes with last year. It was kind of surprising to me as a as a teacher. Um, but being able to compare relative size of numbers between whether positive or negative or both. In particular, if I want to compare those two numbers, the easiest way, or probably the most formal way, would be to put them on a number line and then compare them from there. So if you draw a number line, just make a sketch of one. I have one. Draw yourself a number line. And we'll compare 0 and negative 2. So 0 should go like right here. Negative 2 goes right here. Which one of those two numbers is greater? Which number is greater? Zero. Zero. How do you know? Because it's I never thought about that. Yeah, it's, it's closer to the right side of the number line. Numbers farther to the right are greater. So if we're comparing negative numbers to positive numbers to other negative numbers, to zero, to fractions, to decimals, if you can put them numbers on a number line, we can just look at it from left to right. In this case, zero is farther to the right, therefore zero is greater. Therefore, zero is greater. Probably the most important piece for today, this, the new thing for today, is we're going to look at types of numbers and be able to classify what kind, what the different types and what different, um, uh, the different um, varieties, I guess, would be not a bad word, the different varieties of numbers. In particular, there's more than just one kind of number. Numbers are not just numbers. The most basic type of number is called a natural number. And give yourself some space here, because we're going to make a, what's called a Venn diagram. Okay? It's going to be kind of a weird-looking Venn diagram, but a Venn diagram nonetheless. It's a truth natural Yep. The most basic kind of number is a natural number. Okay? Natural numbers are being any numbers that you can count on your fingers and toes, or some combination of other people's fingers and toes, and so forth. <laughs> Positive whole numbers are natural numbers. So examples of natural numbers would be like 1, like 4, like 300. Any positive whole number is a natural number. Okay? Kind of the building block, the most basic type of number. If you were to go back in like thousands of years ago, if you talk numbers, they would definitely call it natural numbers because those are the ones you can count in your fingers and toes. They're also called counting numbers. They're called natural numbers. So, like, an unnatural number would probably be that. Okay, so, well, now, right now we only have positive whole numbers. So what would be the next logical type of number we want to tack onto this to kind of complete all the numbers that we can use? 
What'll be the next logical step to do if we have only positive whole numbers? Point numbers. Point How about we throw numbers? in the the negative numbers? Okay. So if we start with natural numbers, we can actually build a, a larger set of numbers called the integers. And integers, notice how they're going to contain every single natural number. Every natural number is also an integer. Integers are a little bit bigger, though, in terms of they're, they're different from natural numbers in that they can also contain that other half of the number line. Integers can contain positive or negative numbers or zero. So examples of integers might be zero, might be the positive whole number five. It might be the negative whole number eight. It might be the negative whole number ten. It could be the positive whole number of uh, how about sixty-two. Integers, a number that's an integer is any whole number whatsoever, whether it's positive, negative, or zero. Naturals are just the positive whole numbers. Okay. So then, if you're a natural number, are you also an integer? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If you're an integer, are you also a natural number? Yes. How about negative 10? No. No. Not always. Every natural number is an integer. That's why it's inside the integers. But not every integer is a natural number. Okay? Because we can find examples that fit in the outer circle that can't make it into the inner one. But every inner circle has got to be a part of this larger circle. Is why we're calling this, this is why we're drawing this Venn diagram. So if we have integers, they're all the whole numbers, positive or negative. So what's the next kind of logical step we'd want to take to add in more numbers to our system? Mixed numbers, what are what has what occurs with a mixed number? Fractions are a little bit better. Fractions. Not just decimals in general, but fractions that can be written as decimals, absolutely. The last layer we're going to add to this for today is called the rational number. Rational numbers being uh, numbers you can write as a ratio or a comparison of two whole numbers. Rational numbers are fractions. Any fraction you can write with whole, with whole numbers as the numerator and denominator. So, like for example, I think one half is an easy one. Uh, negative four fifths. How do you write, can you write whole numbers as fractions? Yeah. How do you do that? If I wanted to write the number 4 as a fraction, how would I write 4 as a fraction? Oh. Just write it as over 1. So any whole number can also be written as a fraction. So like, so like uh, 5 has got to be a rational number. Like negative 2. It's got to be a rational number as well. It's a whole number. We can just turn this into a fraction by dividing by 1. What sort of decimals can be written as fractions? That's a good one. What sort of decimals can be written as fractions? Like 3 fourths is what it says a decimal. 0.75. 1 half is 0.5. 1 eighth is, is 0.125. What's what's special about those decimals? What are they what are they doing? Yeah, those are all decimals we turn into fractions. What types of decimals can become fractions? Can we rewrite as fractions? There's two spec two, two specific types. One of them is decimals that end. Any number that terminates or ends as a decimal that ends, like 0.75 terminates. It ends. How do you write one-third as a decimal? Remember? Three, 1.3 repeating. How do you write two-thirds as a decimal? 0.6 repeating. 
you know how to write uh, like one ninth as a decimal? One ninth is one point one 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 repeated. What's special about those types of decimals that are in this fraction? They repeat. Any decimal that repeats, any repeating decimal is also a rational number. So, for example, what's, uh, what type of number is negative 19? What type of number is negative 19? Is it a natural number? It's an integer. No, because it's not positive. Integer, it's a whole number, so it's definitely an integer. And then if it's an integer, it has to be a rational number as well, because every integer is inside of the rational box. It's an integer, and it's a rational number. How about 7? What, ty what's, what type of number is 7? It's a natural. It's a positive whole number. If it's a natural, what else is it? It's an integer. And if it's an integer, it's also a rational number. I've ruby. How about 0 0.3? What type of number is 0 0.3? A rational number. Is it an integer? Why not? Because it's not a whole number. It's a decimal. It's not a whole number. So it's only a rational. How about 144 over 36? What type of number is 144 <laughs> over 36? It's a fraction, so it's definitely a rational. Is it anything else? What's 144 divided by 36? A whole number. So Let me check. Four. four. That fraction also equals 4. So 144 over 36 is the same as 4. So it means not only is it a rational number, it's also a whole number, which is an integer. And it's also a positive whole number, so it's a natural number. Simplify your fractions and tell what kind of to find out what type of number it is, and they'll fit it into our puzzle. All right, let's draw a quick number line. Well, one, if this is zero, here's negative one, here's one. Where let's fit all these on. Negative 0 0.06 is like right here. This is negative 1.47 is like over here. Mega is positive, so it's a little bit over here. Which one's the brightest star then? Farthest left. <coughs> so from brightest to dimmest would be Sirius XM, Arcturus, and Vega. From brightest to dimmest, from least to greatest in this diagram. If I ask you to find the opposite of A, we'll flip the sign of whatever I tell you. So if A is 3 sixths, then opposite of A is negative 3 sixths. If opposite of A is negative 0 0.65, then opposite A is positive 0 0.65. Remember what, these, what this symbol means? Absolute value. Absolute value. How do we find absolute value of a number? Yes, yeah, so the distance from zero distance is always positive. So find the positive value of whatever this is. So absolute value of negative 16.2? Positive 16.2. How about absolute value of positive two thirds? Two plus three. Or two over three, I mean. It's just positive two thirds. Nothing changes. 